This is a horror game podcast. It is meant for mature audiences. It may contain adult language, violence, and sexual themes, as well as shocking revelations. Viewer discretion is advised. Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome back to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Raley. The scenario is Mr. Corbett. It was written by Michael DeWolf, and it appears in Mansions of Badness. Uh, this is the fourth time we've run it. I'm the Keeper of Arcane Lore, and this is Episode 2. Our recap will be given by Tyler Hudak as his character, George Montgomery. So without any further delay, let's continue our journey into the darkness. Tyler? One is the loneliest number that you'll ever do. That phrase has been in my head for a few days since the neighborhood barbecue this past Saturday. In attendance were myself, our host, Dr. and Mrs. Mark Hughes, Ernst Wayne, Jack Lumbaugh, Ruby Alford, Bernie Watts, and surprisingly, Bernard Corbett. Conversation flowed to the events of the day from President Harding's latest voyage, Central Hospital's overflow of patients due to a water main break, and the latest surrounding the animal mutilations that have taken place for two years now. While the police and media are sens sensationalizing this as the work of a person they have termed the Jackal, in my professional opinion, it's probably a group of coyotes in the area. The next day we got together, minus Mr. Corbett, for several hours of bridge, and this is where things got odd. Bernie and Ruby saw Mr. Corbett come home and were sure that they saw an arm in a package that he dropped. A human arm. Of course, we had indulged in some drinks by that point, but they were positive in what they saw. So much so that I accompanied them over to Mr. Corbett's house to ask if everything was okay. After some tactful conversation and some not tactful quips from Bernie, we found that Mr. Corbett had actually obtained some bracket fungus, which from a distance may look similar to an arm. We laughed it off and secured an invitation to see Mr. Corbett's greenhouse and exotic plants the next weekend. While not much of a green thumb, I am excited for this. His greenhouse is whitewashed and you can't see it from inside. You can't see it. His greenhouse is whitewashed, and you can't see inside it from any angle. Not that I've tried. The rest of the week passed uneventfully. Bernie, ever the sleuth, found the obituary of Mr. Corbett's wife and son who died during childbirth 10 years ago. He found another article which revealed the police had a suspect named Rudolf Tomaszewski in the animal slayings, but could not hold him due to lack of evidence. After a conversation with Ernst and Mark, something occurred to me. Corbett has always kept to himself and rarely attended neighborhood events. However, I can't blame him. A widower myself, I understand what it's like to go through the loss of a loved one, and while I cannot imagine what it's like to lose both a young wife and baby, I can only surmise that it has a profound effect on someone. Everyone copes with it in their own way. I ended up coming closer to our neighbors, but Corbett withdrew and occupied his time with his hobbies. Loneliness can do that to a person. While I don't think that Mr. Corbett is smuggling body parts, as Ruby and Bernie think, could there be something going on? No, no, of course not. It's just loneliness playing tricks on us. As I said, one is the loneliest number that you'll ever do. Hmm. That might make a good song. I'll have to mention that to Bernie. Excellent. So... Some of you were going to go investigate at the hospital. Uh, who is going to do that? I believe it was Jack and I. I was going to follow Bernie and let him do all the talking. Okay. Bad Anyone idea. else? Or what's everybody else doing? <laughs> Possibly just going to work. And... <laughs> it's, it's after work on Wednesday, I believe. Wednesday or Thursday. Okay, it might be Thursday. All right. Ernst so... is uh, bottling his um, rhubarb wine, his homemade rhubarb wine, to to bring as a gift on Saturday. Yeah, I think um, I think Ruby's just going to try and be as normal as she can about everything and be attending work. Okay. 
Yeah. Burning. And... Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say Mark is doing his normal daily stuff. Okay. Same, same with George. Okay. So Bernie and Jack, um, you drive down to the central hospital. Um, tell me what you're going to do when you get there. Um, I mean, you can imagine there's a reception area, just like in any hospital. There's an emergency area, and then there's a regular hospital area. Um, well, uh, with uh, the rumors that Jack's been hearing about the like hospital being filled up with the asylum, uh, are, am I noticing any like uh, homeless people or things broken or disorderly? in the area uh no not at all it does seem well you don't probably go to the hospital very often Mm -hmm. um although as firemen maybe occasionally you do if something comes up um it does seem busy there's a lot of people running around um so yeah you don't know you don't uh there is there is a security guard on duty in the front and uh he's just kind of there to make sure that nothing happens you know um imagine if you will there is a reception desk with probably a couple of nurses behind it that are checking patients in as they arrive and so forth so you might have to wait in line for a a little bit but eventually you get up to the the counter uh yes what's the why are you here today? Morning. Uh, Good we're morning. looking for Mr. Uh, Thomas Tomaszowski. Um, do you know what room he's in? He's a staff. He's a he's a staff here. Not oh, a he's patient. a member of staff. Um, yeah. Doctor, orderly. Uh... Orderly. I believe janitor. Um. She pulls out like a roster and she, it's a couple of pages. It's it's a hospital and she goes down the list and she says, well, yes, he is employed here, but he's, he's currently, you know, on duty. I'm not sure. You know what time he's going to get off? Uh, Yeah. He probably gets off uh, at uh, seven. Um, He's got a, uh, his, uh, his direct supervisor is let's see. Let me just make up a name. Uh uh Mr. Johnson. Uh he's in charge of uh uh staff. Did you want to speak with him? No, no, that's all right. Could I'll just write down my number and if you could give it to Mr. Tomaszowski and say I was looking for him, give me a call. That'd be great. All right. Yes, I'll I'll try and do that. She you guys your must be your number. Oh, I was gonna gonna say you guys must be busy with all the uh asylum. Oh, the business. South Wing, yes. Um they've they've converted most of the South Wing into housing for, for the people of the asylum. Um it's quite quite crowded right now. Hopefully there's no other disaster going on that we'll need more hospital beds. We might have to start sending people to Newberry or uh or uh you know Ipswich or something like that. But right now we're we're handling it okay. It's just a little busy. No foreshadowing there. Uh all right. So oh wait, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah. Hopefully you guys are doing head counts so you don't lose anybody. <laughs> See you later. Well they're not the crazies. Oh, these oh, are okay. just these are just some of the people that you know were in for rest and rehabilitation, not for medical reasons. They mm. wouldn't they mm. wouldn't bring the uh, the dangerous people. I see here. what you mean. Have a nice day. Oh, well, Bernie, I didn't know that they had people at the asylum that weren't crazy. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess people get checked in there for all sorts of reasons. Some people just 
feel depressed or whatever. Maybe their uncle hates them. Uh, what do I know? Well, I guess that's a relief. I just had it in my head that all these lunatics were flooding into our town, but I mean, I wonder if uh, one of them might have slipped through or something, but no. Nah. Uh, do you, do you want to hang out and see if we can catch him when he's off work, or what are you thinking now? Came all the way down here. Yeah, we could grab a drink. I have a little bit longer till my set starts. And you know, Jack, Nice. it's not the loonies on the inside you got to worry about. It's the ones on the outside. Right. Um, so you're going to hang out like in the edge of the parking lot or so. And you do find after you're there for, let's say, half an hour or so, that there are a lot of people coming in and out. Um, you do notice that when doctors come out, they're usually in very nice suits. Um, so you can tell there's a sort of class, you know, um, nurses of course look like nurses when they come out, they probably change their clothes at home. You probably notice a couple of orderlies that don't seem to fit, uh, what you would expect from, uh, Tom Mazuski. Um and they're they're dressed in what you might call hospital work clothes. Uh some of them look dirty. Obviously they get the dirty jobs. But right about seven o'clock, you start keeping close eye. Um I would like both of you to do spot hits for me. I rolled a hundred. You're busy looking at your hands. <laughs> oh God. Uh I got a sixty-five. Uh no, I'll just fail it. Okay. So perhaps too many people are coming out right about seven o'clock. Uh and it's Hard to tell. Um, a lot of the orderlies, uh, a lot of the orderlies you see coming out, they've put sort of overcoats on. It's it's warm, but you can tell that they're kind of stained. You know, they probably get various jobs where they end up getting messy, and they don't want to walk around town with that on, but. A few of them get into cars and drive away, and a few of them just walk. Because, like I say, it's a small town. But you have no idea who's who. Hey, Bernie, you ever look at my hand before? Check this out. No. Oh, well, are you, have you been eating those weird brownies oh. again? No. Mr. Mr. Corbett's oh. greenhouse brownies? I think we missed them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, too many people. The human tide. Well, hopefully they pass that message on for you. Yeah, they'll give me a call. All right. Um, right now at home, your phone is ringing, but there's no cell phone, so. <laughs> uh, so what are you going to do now afterwards? probably getting close to dinner time i gotta go to work play my set mm. i need to go home and rest for work tomorrow all right so we'll say bernie when you get to the jazz club uh you go in you go into the back room where you sort of prep, you know, clean up and prep for, for going on stage. And one of the girls comes in and says, hey, Bernie, uh, there's a message for you. And she, she hands you a, a piece of paper. Uh, and it says, I don't know who the hell you are. And that's all that it says. Oh, shit. I thought I paid off Fat Jack last week. This 
a little bit harsh for him. He usually just, you know, gives me a stern talking to in person. She'll she'll tell you it was a dude, do a, a guy's voice you'd never heard before. He oh. sounded kind of youngish. Did you get the number? Um, I didn't ask. He was he seemed pissed off. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, like you were. I mean, you did you call? You know who this this person is? Did you call, or did you talk to this person? She. Uh, she's yeah. not, I'm sorry. It's none of my business. Yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, it's nothing that's going to cause any issue. Just this guy I was looking into. And I'm she just goes a nosy about bastard. Her, yeah, she goes about her business, and you have a nice set, and you probably finish what three in the morning. Bars closed. Uh, you have a last drink, and you head on home. All right, so it's Friday morning. So, I think I'm. I want to um, call the vet that I used to work at. Okay. Um, something that I would normally do anyways. Um. But when I call, I want to ask them a couple questions about the animal mutilations. Sure. All right. Um, uh, this is uh, this is Bobby Jean. Hey, Bobby Jean. This is uh, Doctor Montgomery. Um, uh, Doctor Montgomery, how are you doing? Pretty good. Uh, I, you know, just you know, making sure you guys don't don't need any help, and as usual, I'm, I'm assuming not, but. I, I also had uh, some questions for you. I saw that, um, I don't know if you saw the article in the paper the other day about the animal mutilations uh, that have been going on. Ha have you all gotten any cases with that? Uh, I'm, I'm looking into it for um, for, for a friend uh, and just wanted to see if you know, I can get any information from you all about it. Well, I think everybody's aware of it, you know, Um The thing is, is that when you find a dead animal or a mutilated body part, no, most people don't bring it to the vet. There's nothing we can do. But we've all heard about it, and it seems to be, you know, pets. Um, it's not wild animals. You know, we've got foxes and and animals in the wild. These seem to be all domesticated pets. Because uh, probably... I hate to say it, but probably because they're easier to catch. Yeah, that that makes sense. So, so nobody has uh, brought in any animals that you know they thought were were being attacked uh, that could, that could have been part of this and just saved them in time. I mean, we've had a couple of uh, you know animals hurt, but okay. it wasn't by any any weirdo, uh, and definitely whoever this is, they're they're a weirdo. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, if you can do me a favor, uh, if if sure. somebody does bring in an animal that it looks like they may have been attacked by somebody, can you can you give me a call and let me know? Uh, I'm I'm trying to you know dig down into this. You know, with the free time on my hands, you know, I'll figure I can do at least some good for for the community. Sure. Yeah, I've All got right. your number. All right. Well, well, thank you very much. Talk to you later. What does everybody else want to do? It's still a work day, as there... usual. Uh, um, Mr. Corbett has gotten up, gotten in his leg, and driven to work. Would there be any chance for me to take a look into any re increased reports of, I don't know, child injuries, child deaths hmm. in the area? Sure. Um, let's see. There's probably two places you might find information on that. You might talk to emergency services. Actually, uh, Jack might have some access to that information with ambulances and so forth. Um, the hospital, I'm not sure. I mean, there might be stuff with the police, but the police would be if there's a crime involved. Right. Right. Um, Arkham is, in fact, surrounded by farms in all directions. So, and and child labor laws aren't really in place very well. So, child injuries do happen quite a bit. Um, has there been an upswing? 
Hmm. Not particularly. Okay. Hmm. I think I will follow up with Jack when I uh, when I see him next. I mean, we're seeing him tomorrow anyway. So, uh, well, and he's your neighbor, so right. You can always just, <laughs> just ask him later tonight. Sorry, apologies. I need to fetch coffee at some point. That's okay. Uh, anyone else? Uh, if not, we move to the. We'll say towards the middle of the day when lunchtime is going to be rolling around and Mr. Corbett is going to head to his uh, usual diner to have the same thing that he always has. If any of you want to do something during that period of time. You know, I'll get... Unless anybody else is going to do something, I, I think I'll, I'll stop by and get breakfast there. Roll out of bed at twelve, like always. <laughs> okay. So you walk into the place, and sure enough, Mister Corbett is sitting at his spot, uh, having lunch. Uh, I think it's a turkey sandwich with uh, whatever mayo and tomatoes on it, and. Uh, he does seem, when you first walk in, to be lost in thought. Um, uh, do you do anything to make yourself noticed? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go up to him and be like, hey, Bernie. Not me, Bernie. You, Bernie. Uh, Mr. Watts, how are you this afternoon? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. I, uh, I'm... In my usual busybody nature, uh, I've been looking into some those pet slayings uh, that have been going on recently. The ones that you that were in the newspaper at the barbecue. Mm, exactly. Yeah. Rather gruesome, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, they say it was this guy named Tomaszowski or Tomaszewski. Did they? What uh, a Polish name then? It seems like they just picked up the first foreigner they could get their hands on and slapped the label on him. Hmm. Uh, brother, um, I've been there. Did they arrest him? I think so, but they let him off for lack of evidence a few days later. I tried to contact him, and he gave me a rather curt message on the telephone. It sounds like you're... I mean, be careful. You don't want to get in bed with a criminal, so to speak. Hmm. So you think he did it? I don't know. I just know what you've said. Um, why, why are you interested? Uh, didn't the article say that it's been going on for a couple of years now? You're just doing some amateur sleuthing. Yeah, again, I'm a nosy guy. I used to lead a lot more exciting life, and now I uh, I don't lead as exciting of a life. You play jazz at the club. How was your set last night? Is that how they say it? Oh, it was fine. You know, uh, the drummer kept falling out of time, and I had to kick him one or two or three times, but hmm. no one noticed. They were too drunk. I unfortunately have almost no, uh, well, I mean, I was going to say that I don't really have much jazz experience. I, uh, I haven't listened to music in a long time. It reminds me too much, you know, of, well, you know. All right. So, uh, I was going to invite you, uh, but I guess that's a no. <laughs> no problem. Well, I'm afraid my sleeping habits are pretty set. Uh, if it's past 9 p.m., I'm sound asleep. I don't know how you keep that schedule. Well, I suppose it's a bit of an obsession. You know, make sure everything is in its place. Um it's just it's just my habit cool well what, i'll um, let you go ahead 
you must meet a lot of interesting people at the jazz club. Um, oh, scum of the earth. Ah, really? Uh, do you, uh, I, I'm kind of curious how you're up right now when you stayed up all night. Uh, you must be tired. I just got up like 20 minutes ago. Ah. Uh, I know that uh, uh, is it uh, uh, Dr. Hughes across the street is a pharmacist. Um, does he give you anything to help you stay awake or stay asleep? I know there's a number of yeah, interesting I just quit drinking so uh I'm not looking to uh catch on to the milk of the poppy. I heard that's even worse. Uh-huh. That's opium. Yes. Uh Yeah. It's actually a rather lovely flower, you know, uh, bright red, uh very papery. Uh, uh uh there's a lot of that in uh in India and China. Um in fact, there's a lot of furniture uh, and artifacts that are associated directly with the opium trade. I imagine somewhere in town, there's probably an opium den. I don't know where such a thing would be, but... Uh, Do you, you grow know, anything like that? Anything noxious, poisonous, venomous? Well, a lot of, a lot of uh, ornamental plants uh, do have some toxic properties people don't eat them you know uh, yeah sure a lot of flowers are quite toxic uh i i do have a few exotics like that though i'm not quite sure what they would produce but uh as far as i understand orchids the ones that i grow uh there are no toxic orchids the only edible orchid is vanilla which comes from mexico I heard that stuff's like liquid gold, or not liquid, but pod gold. It's uh, it's a difficult plant to grow. It uh, it's an orchid that grows thirty feet long and uh, only produces pods when it gets very large. You can't grow it in your backyard. Oh, but don't get me started on orchids. I could talk about orchids all afternoon. Yeah, I'll I'll leave you to your lunch, Mr. Corbett. It was nice talking to you. Yes, yes. Nice talking to you as well, Bertie. <laughs> Anyone else? We can move on to the afternoon. Um, can uh, I reach out to uh, the hospital um, okay. and see if I'm able to uh, weasel some of those records out of... Um, you know, the emergency receiving over there. Well, head of hospital is uh, Dr. Charles Shackleton. Uh, if you wanted to talk to him directly, you are a lawyer, so you might know the right things to say. Sure. Yeah, I would like to, uh, we'll go ahead and reach out to Dr. Shackleton directly. All right. Uh, this is Dr. Shackleton. What can I do for you? Good afternoon, Dr. Shackleton. This is Ruby Alford, uh, Dr. Alford's wife. I'm calling because I've noticed um, I've had some issues with uh, a client of mine. I was wondering if you might be able to send over some information for me. Um, well, you know, there's a lot of confidence. As long as it's not something confidential. No, no, no. I don't need names or, uh, or anything like that. I just need to know, um, has there been any uptick in uh, youth patients that you've been receiving, say, under the age of 15? Um, you mean the, uh, what do you mean? I mean, we've got children with colds and things all the time. Um, Some trauma patients, more, uh, uh, you know, more serious injuries. Far farming thing. accidents and things Yes, like that, that sort of thing. Um, we've had a few. I mean, I think that's one of those things, especially this time of year during the summer when children get injured, uh, especially doing farm work. Um, Sometimes we can patch it up. Sometimes we have to amputate. Sometimes we can't do anything, you know. Um, hopefully infection doesn't set in. Yeah, that is that is always quite tragic. Um, do, you, do you keep records on whether or not um, traumas of that severity 
uh, come into the hospital? Well, there's records on all of it, of course. Is there any chance I could ask you to uh, collate that information for me without any personal information? I'm just looking for number of injuries, rather, or uh, as sad as it is to say, number of deaths that may be occurring from this sort of farm work. Is this uh, for insurance purposes? No, no, no. Um, well, I didn't want to let the secret out of the bag, but I may be pursuing a, uh, a political office. And this might be an issue that I will be pursuing. Well, I could turn that project over to administration. I'm not sure how quickly they could pull that together. It's extremely busy here right now with the asylum. Of course. Um, could you get it over, say, next week? I'll see what I can do. Uh, let me have your contact information. and, and Absolutely. So and I will exchange information with the good doctor. And I so, apologies. What was the uh, good doctor's last name again? Shackleton. Shackleton. Thank you. Dr. Charles Shackleton. Right. So evening on Friday. Anybody want to do anything? You guys want to converse? Can... Uh, I am going to go over to uh, Jack's house and knock on his door. Oh. Uh, hello, Ruby. Uh, to what can I owe the pleasure? Good evening, Jack. Um, I was wondering, do you, I know that you, uh, you handle a lot of fire call and obviously, but, um, oh, yeah, all the time. Do you have a good rapport with any of the ambulance drivers? Yeah. Yeah. I got a couple buddies. Um, have they noticed any kind of uptick in, uh, uh, child injuries or, you know, unfor you know, unfortunate deaths, anything like that? Oh, I, I haven't heard any rumors. I, I could reach out. Would you mind? I'm the uh, the the incident from last weekend has uh, been rattling around in my head, and I am looking. Oh, well, I am looking for... into uh, a legislative issue. I thought um, while it had given me quite a start, I uh, it got me thinking about the fact that we do have so many children performing such dangerous labor. Hmm. Yeah, so sure, sure. Awesome. I really appreciate it. Um, is there anything I can bring for you tomorrow? Oh, no, that's all right. So you think on the job stuff or you think there's a serial killer lurking the streets? No, 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 no. Um, I expect this to be more on the job kind of thing. If uh, if the children, if young children were being uh, taken and uh, treated in such ways as the house pets, I think we would have heard about this a lot sooner. Well, okay, so I, I think uh, it sounds like you got issue with the morgue. You're wondering how the bodies are handled after they're dead. No, well, yes, but more importantly, I just wanted to know if there's been more than usual uh, work-related deaths involving children under the ages of 15 or 16. Okay. Um, but now that you mention it, the morgue might be a pretty good place to look, actually. Yeah, if, if things are going missing, it would hmm. go through them. You know, Jack, you're smarter than you look. Thank you very much. For <laughs> oh, oh, thanks. Well, you have yourself a wonderful evening. Yeah, thank you. See you tomorrow. Yep. See you. All right. Okay. Well, anything else for me, I you. I think that's a valuable piece of information. <laughs> That's a good idea. Um, morgue's probably not open on a Saturday, and if it's Friday evening, it's too late to get there now. Right? Probably. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not so sure about it. It depends on what morgue you're talking about. If you're talking about county morgue, um, that's one thing. If you're talking about the morgue at the, in the basement of the hospital, that's another thing. Fair, fair point. They're always having would, to take bodies. <laughs> yeah, I would <laughs> probably start local, and if I didn't feel I got answers there, I would expand to county. All right. But I um, feel like that's probably an adventure for another day. Okay. All right. So, 
Saturday, unless anybody wants to do anything before Saturday. Um, Saturday comes. Uh, uh, right on schedule early in the morning, well, whenever he usually starts, uh, Mr. Corbett mows his lawn. Uh, he especially takes care making sure everything looks perfect because he is expecting you all to uh, to join him. He wants the garden to look nice. Of course, it always does. Um, I think he said 10. Was it 10 a.m.? So around, you know, 945 or so, uh, you all start to make your way over to his house. And uh, he greets you at the front of his property, at the, the, the white picket fence with the little gate in it. Uh, he is dressed in his blue overalls, which he likes to wear when he is gardening. Um, ladies, gentlemen, welcome. Uh, are you ready for the tour? Yes, very much so. So, you may all know that uh, growing vegetables, uh, you can start the vegetables inside the greenhouse uh, so that they grow a little bit during the winter, and then you plant them out when the when the weather warms up. And so now he's walking you kind of around behind the property, and you can see there there's the there's there's little gravel paths that you're on. There's the greenhouse. Uh, his garden is over to your right hand side. It's filled with, you know, beautiful looking plants. Um, for those of you, you probably all know a little about gardening. So you see onions and broccoli and, and all sorts of nice vegetables growing there. Um, and he's walking you towards this greenhouse. It's fairly decent sized for a private greenhouse, maybe, uh, um, maybe 20 feet wide and 60 feet deep uh, and maybe 13 or so feet high. So there's plenty of room overhead. Uh, it is whitewashed, so you can't really see inside, but you see, you can see that as you get closer to it, you sort of can. It's, it's as if it's got white, you know, stain on all of the glasses to, to diffuse the light. Um, he says, now, uh, I I hate to do this, but um, I keep the inside very regulated as far as humidity and temperature and everything because they're tropical plants. Uh, when we go inside, it's going to feel warm, and it's going to be a little you know sticky. The air it's 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 humid, like the worst part of the when the the summer. Um. And then we'll we'll have to be we have to limit our time inside. Uh, we will have to go inside and close the door and make sure that that the temperature stays the same. So if at any time you start to feel uncomfortable, you know we can we can come back outside. So I'm pretty sure Jack's gonna walk in and immediately be like, "Ooh, ah, I'll wait outside, guys." <laughs> yeah, the ever walked beautiful plants, Mister Corbett. <laughs> See inside his house at all through the windows. Um, there are lace curtains, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely, uh, there's definitely, you know, you could look in if you went and looked in the windows. It is built up about three feet. There's like a three foot porch around it, uh, so you'd have to actually go up on the porch. All right, so he takes you inside, and indeed, when he opens up the door, it's like going into a sauna. Okay. And surprisingly, it's it's filled. It's got all sorts of things. It has orchids hanging from the ceiling on uh, uh, looks like wires that hang down. And then there's like a piece of tree bark and the orchid is attached itself to the tree bark and it's it's growing and it's hanging. And some of them are in bloom and a lot of them are not in bloom. Orchids are not particularly pretty looking plants. They're kind of ugly. It's when they bloom that they're really pretty. Uh, he's got a lot of those. He's got a lot of odd looking um, plants that he points out are carnivorous. They eat bugs. Uh, he mentioned that before. 
And uh, he's also got uh, tables. There's there's a uh, big long table down the middle of the greenhouse, and then there are tables on the sides, and they have uh, they have flats of seedlings and things like that are, that are growing in all all different kinds of uh, configurations and colors. Most of it beautiful, colorful, strange looking things. Um, you notice one plant hanging down from the ceiling that almost looks like it has little faces with teeth. Uh, the one on the on the upper right hand side. Um, all sorts of various colors and beautiful things that you're seeing. Now, as you move down into the greenhouse, the whole back of the greenhouse, the very far end of the greenhouse, is dominated by this vine. And the vine is creeping up into the rafters of the greenhouse, and it's hanging down. And it's all coming out of a large pot that's there. It looks like maybe a half a whiskey barrel uh, that he's got it growing in. And it has these very large purple, bluish purple flowers on it. They look kind of like morning glories, if you've ever seen morning glories. And they're almost um, magically colored. The blues and purples in them seem to scintillate in the light when you move back and forth, like butterfly wings almost. Um, truly spectacular. And right in front of the plant, on a pedestal, uh, there is an Asian statue of some sort, an odd-looking thing. Uh, it looks like it's made out of solid gold, and uh, it is uh, it is right in front of that plant. I think once uh, I see that. I'll say, Mr. Corbett, this is quite an unusual plant and, and statue. Um, what did you get that from your your business? Uh, yes, it came in a while back. It is a uh, one of the Asian deities. Uh, in this case, it is uh, the god of death. Oh, that yeah, not what I would expect I... to be in a place of such life. Well, you never know what you're going to get when you do your hunting in India and so forth. But uh, uh, it seemed appropriate. Uh, there are a lot of, um, shall we say, superstitions about this particular plant. Uh, it comes from the Himalayas. And uh, a lot of the, uh, the locals, uh, you know, associate it with uh, funerals and uh, death. And... Uh, and so I, I saw the statue. It's one of the things that came in, and I just thought it looked nice. You know, occasionally I get to treat myself to something unusual. Uh, everybody do psychology role. Ooh. I also do want to look closely at the statue's shoes, the slippers that it has on. I it actually doesn't. They're bare feet. Oh, okay. Oh, I have gosh. a regular success on a psychology roll. I have an extreme success. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I failed. What um what Mr. Corbett suddenly does is uh he's he's look you know, he's he's proudly, you know, displaying this to you. And he's looking up at the plant, and his demeanor, for just a moment, sort of changes. And he says, uh, "I can feel the a change in the humidity. We we need to remove ourselves from the uh, from the greenhouse now. We're we're changing the temperature too much, and almost a little too." Uh, I don't know, a little too anxiously. He kind of shuffles for you guys to move back down the greenhouse and, and out the door. Hmm. Um, 
and because you've got an extreme mark, uh, you do notice that as as you're about halfway back out, uh, he turns back and he looks at the plant with some concern on his face. And um, did, did I happen to notice any kind of change to the plant while we were standing there? Um, you didn't. However, uh, as you are getting to the door, why don't you all do spot? Well, you you notice. So you do spot hidden. A, a spot hidden. If you pass, do a spot hidden then. So. Oh, if you made the psych roll? Yeah. Because you've noticed the sort of change in his behavior. Oh, uh, I got a, a an extreme. Nice. Just got a regular. How about you, Mark? I did not pass that. I okay. guess I'm confused. So, Mark, you're looking at the plant, and you you don't really think you noticed anything. Um, maybe he's just concerned because the the you know he said all about the humidity and the temperature and stuff. Ruby and Oh, well, Bernie. Well, we'll start with Bernie. You just got a regular. You're not 100% sure, but something about the plant did seem to change a little bit. You're not sure what it was, but it it just sort of rubs you a little bit strange as you are going out of the room. Uh, but Ruby, you were yourself noticing that it's a beautiful, beautiful plant. But I was thinking about touching the leaves, but I'm beginning to think I'm glad I didn't. Yeah, but just as you are getting to the door and you are looking back, you are convinced that all of the flowers are pointing in your direction. Like they'd like swiveled towards us? Like they'd all sort of swiveled in your direction. Oh. That's and, uh, unsettling. Um, yeah, indeed. Uh, but he, he gets you outside and he closes the uh, greenhouse. You might also notice... I'll have you do a spot hidden. Oh, you can all do spot hiddens in this case. Yeah, the dice are hot tonight because I got another uh, another uh, hard success. You got a hard success as well? I can do math. I almost said extreme, but that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I got an extreme success, though. So, If you yeah, passed, I... the one thing that you do <laughs> notice, the one thing that you notice, those who passed, he doesn't lock the greenhouse. It doesn't even have a lock on it. It's got a latch, but it's just latched closed. I mean, why lock something when you live in a neighborhood where nothing ever happens? Um, that is true. So now he goes into a few discussions on the need for special <laughs> fertilizers and uh, and things that mimic their natural environment. And now it gets kind of boring um but yeah that's that's the the greenhouse he also probably then turns and says now you can see my vegetable garden if you have any questions we've got this crop coming up in this crop and these things over here and everything looks lush and beautiful and you can all expect plenty more baskets during the uh during the coming months oh beautiful property mr corbett beautiful absolutely beautiful Fruit yes, trees, I... he picks a couple of fruits and hands them out. And... This is quite amazing what you've been able to accomplish with your, your green thumb. Definitely more than, than I can. Uh, if you don't mind, I, I'd love to, you know, pick your brain at, at some point, you know, maybe next year when I'm, you know, trying to start my own garden. Of course, of course. Yes, um, gardening's really not that difficult. It just takes a little bit of dedication. Oh, it looks like the from from what we saw in the the greenhouse. That looks like a lot of dedication. Individual plants, you don't have to do that much for them. You water them and you give them some food, and then you can go for a week or so and nothing, and then you do it again. You just well, can't not 
not do it. <laughs> right. You, you did say that some of the plants in there were uh, carnivorous. What, what what do you feed those? Uh, bugs and things like that oh, that okay. I find. Um, sometimes I'll feed them, you know, fish meal or uh, uh, shrimp that I get cheap from the store because shrimp are just pretty much bugs of the sea. Hmm. And and the one in the back, the very unusual one, uh, is that carnivorous as well? Um, no, not really. Oh. Uh, it's, uh, but it does have uh, toxins in it. And, oh, uh, okay. Um, I almost gave in to the temptation to touch it. I'm glad I didn't. Well, yeah, that probably wouldn't have been a good idea. Are are the adventure stories true, uh, Bernard? Can some of these carnivorous plants grow large enough to pose a threat to humans? Huh. Well, obviously anybody who's found one of those hasn't lived to tell anybody about it. Uh, who knows? I don't think so. There are some arguments, however, that uh, carnivorous plants are more, more uh, prevalent than we think. Uh, you've probably all occasionally gone into the woods and picked blackberries um yes and those blackberry bushes if you get snagged into the middle of them they cling to you and and hold you uh you have to kind of rip them out and we're lucky we have clothes on but if you're a sheep you your hair could get easily tangled in that plant and he'll never escape he'll starve to death and die and the plant will benefit from the rotting <clears throat> carcass at its huh. feet so is it carnivorous i don't know these plants some of these plants are from madagascar some from borneo some from exotic places in india and they're just a hobby you know i don't think there's any any benefit to growing them speaking of hobbies you mentioned you have a a collection of fungus fungi well, no, but I do collect certain funguses, and then I grind them up and make them into fertilizer. Um, oh, I see. Basically, what fertilizer, what what you know, our natural fertilizer is usually animal dung and uh, plant waste, and bacteria grow on it and break it down. Worms crawl through it and break it down. But certain funguses will do that very quickly. So, I obviously use quite a bit of compost. Uh, some of the fertilizers will break down the compost very quickly and allow me to use it faster than it would for no beliefs. I suppose there might be an industrial use for that at some point, but mm. I'm not really interested in sharing my secrets. <laughs> but you do keep a wonderful garden, even though it is one that must be so carefully maintained. Um, have you ever thought about doing a garden party? I understand that we, you know you must maintain the uh, uh, integrity of your greenhouse, but um, I'm sure there's you know some reporters in town that would be interested in seeing what you have here. Oh no, I, I wouldn't. I okay. wouldn't care for that at all. You know, I'm not really an entertainer. Well, it's quite all right. I it was just a thought I had. And I will put that away. Didn't mean to panic you, Mister Corbett. Well, um, ladies and gentlemen, if uh, if I've satisfied your curiosity, then uh, have a nice day. Yes, and, and thank thank you so much, Mister Corbett. Uh, this was uh, very you know amazing to to see uh, what you've accomplished, and uh, you know I hope it, if you do get anything new, you know, please invite us back. You know we would love to to see what you accomplish. Of course, of course. Uh, if you have any questions, yeah, you know, please don't hesitate to ask. Thank you, Mr. Corbett. Beautiful property. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you, Bernard. Thank you. All right. So what are you guys gonna do? Are you all gonna go to your homes or are you going to I I feel like Mark had mentioned that he was making wine, some rhubarb wine. Yeah. That was Ernst. 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 Oh, Ernst. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ernst, Ernst yeah. yeah. Yeah, I I, I have a, a fresh batch of rhubarb wine if you gents want to come over and ladies and gents want to come over and share with me. Oh, yes, please. Mr. Corbett is so boring, guys. 
<laughs> well, Jack, you didn't go in there. It was actually quite I, amazing. I saw and... enough. I like. I can respect the hobby. That's it's great for him. But I, I think the jungle <laughs> should stay in South America. <laughs> the greenhouse was beautiful. I I feel uh, inspired for um, a new project for a shoe. Yes, although, although I admit the the statue was a little off putting. Um, I, I did not expect a statue of death to be in the middle of a, a greenhouse full full of life and, and plants and like a skeleton with a scythe. No, no. it was um, it was a rather rotund uh, like Asian bull of some kind. Yeah. Uh, it's Yen, it's Yen Ma, right? It's the Buddhist god of death. What? If Ernie, how do so? you know that? Because. I wrote a scenario about it. <laughs> Bernie <laughs> hangs out with a beat. We're going to score a bottle for Bernie getting meta. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he was in a wrathful pose when they're like, Bleh. like I can't do it on camera, but when their arms are outstretched like that, that's the wrathful pose. Really? That's even more interesting. I mean, Mr. Corbett said that he, he has it because he found it... Uh, interesting and you know he that is a solid his... that is a solid gold statue George. no you don't think it's actually Whoa, we... solid no, gold do that you? can't be solid gold absolutely but, but it obviously is. the reason he has it is as a warning to people like ruby don't touch this plant the plant i mean was it's very just i mean you it's could like also a barrier that's just all hang is. a sign that says don't touch the plant well like how big are we talking like people sized no, no, probably, probably a foot and a half tall. Okay. It would, if it was solid gold, it would still weigh probably a couple of hundred pounds. Would you say gold is very heavy? It might not have been like through all the way through, but it was at least plated or hollow, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely like a, a rather expensive piece. Well, um, you guys saw his house. The man clearly has money. Well. Yes. There are many metals, Bernie, that uh, can be plated on to, to look like gold. Um, uh, but, you know, if you if you want, next time uh, I visit with him, I can check, uh, you know, as my history um, is not just with making shoes, but also as a tinsmith. Um, little, probably be pretty easy to find out information, or we could just ask him. That's, I mean, that's true. It was certainly interesting, and especially given that there was no other decoration in the greenhouse at all. I mean, he, he's not exactly posting the pink flamingos everywhere. <laughs> well, I, well I, I... to be fair, that is a spectacular plant. Yes. If you're going to have decoration, that would be the place to have it. Yeah, I, I wish I would have had a... a more of a chance to look at it uh, he he did kind of usher us out uh, kind of quickly i mean i understand the you know needing to keep the the environment as regulated as possible but I, i'm sure mm -hmm. another minute or two couldn't have hurt no but we were invading the man's privacy um True. you don't you don't think there was anything unusual you know, about that i i i didn't want to bring it up but I did notice that when we left, and this is going to sound crazy, um, but when we left, all of the flowers were pointing at us. Point when you direction. say that, Bernie, you suddenly realized that was what was weird about that plant. Because oh, okay. they were like this when you walked in. <clears throat> Do you think he said carnivorous plants were in there? Yeah, but he said that that one wasn't carnivorous. I mean, he wouldn't be lying to us about that, would he? That there would be no reason. I, would there? Well, you know how sun. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I don't think so. But he did seem something changed about him as he was staring at this plant. Um, I didn't notice about the things looking at us, but I, I was paying attention to him. And and you too, Mark. I yeah. expect this out of Bernie and Ruby. They saw the <laughs> the fungus the other day and thought it was an arm. But well, I, Ernest, no, I think Corbett what's, is just what's a the very sudden normal... fascination. 
I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just noticed something about him. All I'm saying is, you know how sunflowers point at the direction of the food? You mean the sun? Yeah, well, that's plant food. Right. You, Maybe you know, it was pointing at the direction of its food. I, what, what hmm. was the point of you guys even going in there? You were thinking that he had something to do with the animal killings or had an arm? He, you... he just invited us. I've wanted to see the inside of that greenhouse for years. I don't know why I didn't ask earlier. Okay. Well, I mean, I, animal mutilations, it wouldn't fit. But if I'm going to give in to my inner paranoia, that last plant was probably large enough to eat a cat. Do we, do we really seriously think that our neighbor is capturing domestic animals and feeding it to his plant? Oh, I don't think no, so. No, but I also didn't expect Bernie to apparently have an encyclopedic knowledge of East Asian uh, religion. <laughs> so I'm a bit out of my depth, Mark. Well, it, you're not. Wait a minute. You're, you're you're not suggesting that Mr. Corbett is the the jackal because the 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 animals that are being attacked are being mutilated. Right. No, I'm not <laughs> suggesting that he's the jackal. It's, right. Okay. Um, that would be crazy. <laughs> uh -huh. well, um, I mean, but no, I... the, the plants are concerning. Um, I don't have much experience in gardening or uh, I almost said herbology, but um, botany. At botany, thank you. Um, but I plan on putting my research skills to the use this week. I've never seen a plant with purple leaves like that before. I mean, look, Buddhism's a very complex religion. A lot of human sacrifice in it. They got the skull cup you drink blood out of. I mean, it's symbolic, right? But some of them are made out of real skulls. Do we know if Corbett goes to... Oh, so I apologize. I'm trying to remember the previous Sunday... We knew that he went for a drive. He would. He didn't go to the church that we know of, right? Not that you know of. He usually okay. goes for a Sunday drive. He's gone for a few hours. Okay. Maybe three, four hours. Hmm. Well, our neighbor is quite the mystery, but no, I don't think he's our serial animal mutilator. Um, no. You guys just have some wild imaginations. It's it's just a building he grows plants in. It's not some little shop of horrors. Well, I have to admit, Ruby, Bernie, Mark, you're making me think um, he was a little vague about what he fed to his larger plants. He did say when I spoke to him in the diner, he had plants that would eat rats but he doesn't feed them that. But he didn't say what he did feed them. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, how strong is this wine? <laughs> Plant that can yeah. eat rats? That's crazy. Well, I'm... anyway. Um, I think Why I've... didn't he show us that? <laughs> I think I've seen enough. Um, I don't know about yeah. you gentlemen, but I'm I'm going to go get some rest. After you actually, if you show, if you look at the picture of all of the plants, the one in the bottom right hand corner uh, is more than more than enough to fit a rat in. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Oh, sorry. It's it's what am, what am I saying? Rest. It's like what noon. You know. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It's noon. I'm gonna go get some that's, lunch. Uh, that's a pitcher plant. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, folks. Sorry. Go ahead. No, oh, thank you. I, I, I could have sworn, I bet he's getting into Buddhism, because I could have sworn one of those plants was, you know, making jazz cigarettes. He was growing some Buddha, if you know what I mean. <laughs> are, are you suggesting he's... Oh, okay. I could see it. Oh, it's good for Are you. you Come on. It helps with depression. Illegal substances on his plants. <laughs> no, I, I don't it's, think that's not illegal. illegal. Yeah, that's yeah. not illegal. <laughs> I caught myself. 
it's uh it's good for you it's medicinal it helps with depression makes you feel good so yeah i guess that's why he's getting into buddhism i don't know god of death seems that, a little is, weird i i agree you know i mean that is quite unusual but you know who doesn't have unusual hobbies or thoughts or, or whatever i mean maybe he just found it interesting and that's why he he uh obtained it um, it is quite striking you pray to it though it's more or well some people do but it's more of a you pray to the buddha you know if you have the shrine you do the this thing well that so. place looked cramped it, it wasn't was there like an altar or something like space for him to prayer out it was on a pedestal hmm yeah but it just sounds like decoration the way you guys are talking about it i mean he doesn't you know, go to it... church on sunday yeah it, but... except for the fact that the plant was behind it and very beautiful and it was on a pedestal it didn't really come across as any kind of shrine there were no candles there was no incense there was just a pretty garden statue or and you know while i would not advocate for you know going in there on our own you know we could wipe away it, i mean jack if, if you wanted to see what we were talking about i'm sure there would be a way for us to wipe away the 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 whitewash on uh, on the outside a little bit to get a better view um you know i again you know i wouldn't want to do this when uh mr corbett was home uh you know being neighborly and, and, and all that, but I mean, it, it was kind of interesting. Uh, you, you did miss out on it. I I believe you, but hearing about it's good enough. Some weird golden statue. All right. <clears throat> I I did notice his front door the other day was kind of sticky. I, uh, I might pop by and see if, uh, if he'd let me fix that for him. Perhaps when he's at work on Monday. Or out for his drive tomorrow. Of course, since there's no fence, we could just sneak over there when he's gone tomorrow for his drive. I mean, from what I'm hearing you suggest, you're really just being a good neighbor. Oh, of course. That's one way. I will fix it. it. I will just remind you, you're not criminals. <laughs> exactly. It, it's it's the wine. I I would never do a crack. <laughs> could, we, so. could we break quickly so I could uh, have a quick bio break? Sure. Thank you. I will be right back. Two minutes later. So... You guys are drinking your wine. Uh, uh, you know, you see Mr. Corbett fiddling around in the garden a little bit after that, and then he goes into his house. Uh, he seems a little bit more determined. Perhaps he was annoyed that he showed you guys around his garden it was a break in his routine but uh he would never admit to that he would never be impolite um so what do you guys want to do uh it's saturday evening what are you guys going to plan for tomorrow if if anything I, uh, Ernst really is going to stop by, knock on his door, and okay. offer to fix his uh, uh, sticky latch. Things like that bother Ernst. Okay. So you go over to his house and you knock on his door. And once again, it takes a few minutes before you hear his footsteps coming. He comes to the door and he opens up the door and he looks at you and he says, Ernst, uh, what can I do for you? Oh, Bernard, it's actually something I hope I can do for you. I noticed the latch on this door was uh, sticking. 
bothering you yeah, a little it, bit it, it sticks in the summer for some reason i think it yeah. expands or contracts or mm. uh you know i i hate to say this this is just a little thing i have but i want things to work right can i fix that for you i mean how would you fix it uh well you know i i i i done work as a tinsmith i i understand how locks work um and and doors you know just be neighborly sit down spend a spend an afternoon looking at it see if i can fix it for you um, i mean but I but i mean it. i don't want to if you like it the way it is i don't want to <laughs> um i don't know uh And he suddenly starts to look just a little distressed, like he's trying to figure out how to work out the schedule or something like that. That's right, the way it comes right. across. Um, let me plan my schedule, and uh, and I'll uh, I'll 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 keep in touch. Uh, I mean, of it's course, of course. Idea. That's very kind of you. It's very kind of you. We've been uh, neighbors for a while, and you've you've given me so many vegetables and and fruits through the years. It's the least I could do. Did you enjoy the the greenhouse? I did. It was beautiful. It, it's that uh, plant, that gigantic plant at the end was very striking oh yes uh that's uh he says um he says my notes where are my notes <laughs> he calls it something he calls it uh almost unthinkingly he calls it get all my notes ready and then one thing i want is missing he he gives it a, he he calls it by a latin name and how's your latin <laughs> <laughs> uh Ernst has no Latin. Um well the name that he gives it sounds like monster or something. Monster or yeah. Morty or uh an odd name. That uh that monster. M Morty, uh, Bernie mentioned that that statue you had there was, or perhaps you said this, I don't recall, um, that that statue is a Buddhist statue of death. Yes. Uh, um, I mean, I wasn't aware of what it was when I first obtained it. Uh, oh. I just came in as Asian statue and... yeah. I normally I would have you know put it on sale in my shop, but uh, I kind of liked it. So it's uh, striking. Yes, indeed, the workmanship is is yeah. quite exquisite. Is that uh, gold plating I saw on it, or I don't think that it's heavy enough to be solid gold, but right, uh, I think it's some baser metal, and then the gold on top of it. Uh, Right, they do a lot right. of gold leafing and stuff, but right. it's been polished to the point where it looks like it's solid. It's beautiful. It's probably hollow metal. Yeah. Yeah. But uh um I'll I'll get back to you on, okay. on that. Okay. Great, Bernard. You know, I either stop by or leave me a note, or if we see each other in town or or just in the backyard, you know. Of course. I yeah. Ernst, why don't you do a spot hidden for us? Failed that one. Lost my extreme earlier. <laughs> yeah, nothing really seems out of the ordinary then to you. 
Uh, you know what? Jesus, can you... can I use can I use luck, Tom? I suppose. Go ahead. Okay. I'll use ten points of luck. Oh, of course. If you meant it in that way, yes, of course you can. Um, uh, I don't want to say that there seems to be something wrong with Mr. Corbett, but his eyes are a little bloodshot. And he looks a little distressed already. Uh, he, you, you'd almost think that he seems just a little confused, but... Hmm. He's good at still being very polite and, right, and straightforward right. and practice um, that covering. Okay. Uh, well, Bernard, I'm sorry. Um, it was nice to see you twice in one day. Again, thank course. you for Drop the by tour. <laughs> and and let me know um if, if I can help you with that door. I I'll I'll keep in touch, yes, of course. And he closes the door and uh, you walk away. Where are you going to go? Home or back to report to the game? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll go home. If anybody's interested, they can come by. All right. Because, you know, Ernst is being very honest. He really does want to help him with the door. Okay. All right, so uh, you all head back home. Uh, I need to do a dice. Um, is there anything you want to do this evening now that you are all back home? Any continuation of, of your investigation? Or... Is, is there any chance that Ernst could, like, write down kind of what he thought that plant sounded like uh yes of course you can so phonetically um i still haven't found it but okay yeah so you uh you take notes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, um then then i pop by mark's house because he seems like the kind of person who might have um have a latin dictionary or something like that um that could help not me the legal scholar having to do legal terms in latin <laughs> definitely not something i would have on hand um yeah i i'm pretty decent at latin i've got some yeah uh, some some books yeah yeah, yeah the lawyer I... probably would have latin under his belt as well uh let's what? see just from... I just figure um, medical things are often in Latin, so right. That's fine. Don't don't worry about the the real real thing. But maybe, you know, is this something that Mark might know or? Well, definitely the Latin. If he, if you say monster or monstra or something like that, it means really big. <laughs> and mort is death. So really big death. It's an odd name for a plant. It is really big. It is. It is. It's really pretty too. Truly. Oh, and now I find it and I'm completely wrong. Uh, <laughs> it's uh it's this. This has to be uh the banality involved in this investigation has, yeah. has got to be tough <laughs> to get through. <laughs> Mark, Mark, uh, since you know a little Latin, uh maybe yeah. you can pronounce that. Carnatum. Mortis incarnatum purpurea. It's a yeah. purple meat death, if anything. Purple meat death. Death incarnate. That's... Death incarnate is a good. I like that. That's a good one, Bernie. Yeah. Purple death well, incarnate. Yeah, mortis incarnatum. 
death incarnate purple purple death incarnate purple death incarnate. <laughs> it's important to have that modifier because there's other death incarnate plants uh <laughs> Yeah, I, I I tell Ernest I'm I'm not sure. That's that's what that means. Uh, it's All right. kind of you know maybe, maybe we could uh, maybe we could go to the library and check it out uh, and figure out maybe what what the uh, historical reason for that particular name, especially the university library. Yeah, they're more likely to have something like you that. Got the Miskatonic yeah. biology mm -hmm. department and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the usually names are given for a reason, uh, and so perhaps we can learn a little bit more about the biology of this plant by its name and and some other things actually as well. I mean, he did act so he acted a little funny around that plant, but then when I went over to visit him, he also. He didn't really seem himself. He uh, his eyes were a little bloodshot. He seemed almost, uh, you know, when we were talking about me fixing his door, he seemed almost a little confused hmm. about um, planning that, trying to find a, a time to do that. Well, you know, he's a very regular man. He does everything on a regular schedule. Are and you guys so, all together, or are you just at Mark's house? Okay. I I stopped by Mark's house. Okay, that's what I said. So I was going to say Bernie might recognize some of the signs, but he's not there. So yeah, I, I well, just think Mark's just... a pharmacist. I mean, yeah, well, that's true. So, uh, yeah, it does sound like possible pharmacology uh uh but then there are a lot of drugs available nowadays yeah and it, it could be accidental because even he admitted that some of the plants that he has uh you know might have some kind of pharma pharmacological uh properties to them and so maybe he just accidentally mishandled them I don't know. I'm I'm trying to give him a benefit of the doubt. That know? makes sense. Yeah. No. My, I hope he's okay. I, I do too. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll keep a watch and make sure that um, that it doesn't get any worse. And then maybe or continue. Yeah, and maybe I'll check on him tomorrow. Uh, see how he's doing, just to yeah. make sure he's not getting worse. I've got to I've got to dig up. Uh, a bed in my backyard um anyway so maybe i'll just uh stay out there tomorrow and keep an eye all right so the next morning comes and so it's now sunday correct it's now sunday and right on cue probably around seven o'clock in the morning um anybody who's keeping an eye notices mr orbit come out of his house uh he walks to his car he gets in and he pulls out and begins to drive away for his morning drive cool. I'm going to um, I want another look at that statue. So I think uh, I'm going to see if I could get into the greenhouse. Um, so you're just going to walk over to his house and go in? I mean, I'm not in heels, but yeah. Like once, once <laughs> I'm sure that he's gone... Um, I would like right. to uh, see if I could get into the greenhouse. What, what are uh, the odds that any of us see Ruby sneaking over? Well, th what time are you going over, Ruby? You, Oops, you're muted. muted. Sorry. The man's like perpetually on a schedule, right? So I've right. probably got four, muted. five hours before he returns. 
Yeah. I'll probably give I'll probably give it about 30 minutes just to make sure uh you know he hasn't right. forgotten anything or you know left the oven on and um go over there. Right. So we'll say around 7:30. 7:45. Um what are the chances that Aunt Bernie's not going to be awake? Uh <laughs> Ernst has a project he's working on. He was inspired by the the flowers, so he's working on a new shoe project in his uh, his uh, workshop. So he's not looking at the at the side. So let's see, Ernst. Uh, I see where you live, uh, Ruby. Uh, Ruby, you're across the street from Ernst. So Ernst, you can do me a uh, either a luck roll or a spot hidden, whichever one you want. Um, to see if you notice Ruby walking over to Mr. Corbett's house. I'll roll against my luck. Okay. Uh, failed. Okay. So uh, you might be on the other side of your house getting ready to dig, and you don't notice. Um, so, Ruby, you walk past, and you uh, you get over to Bernard's house. Um Dr. Hughes, are you awake this early? Um, yeah, I, I feel like that um that yeah, I would be up up early. Okay. Um, you can also do either a luck or a, a spot hidden to see if you notice Ruby out your front window. Yeah, I I do. Okay. Yeah, you notice Ruby walking over. Uh, Ruby, describe how you do this. You just walk right sure. in, you walk back and forth a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, because because nothing ever happens in this neighborhood, and I am so used to the patterns of our good friend and neighbor, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bernard Corbett. Um, once he's gone, like I know that he's gone. So um in flats, I'll be walking over. Um, she's out of her normal sort of like fashionable gowns or, or dresses that she wears for work. Um, she's uh, apparently stolen a uh, pair of coveralls from her husband um, and is uh, basically looking around just to see if any of you are also happen to show up. And uh, if not, it's going to let herself in through the front gate. Walk in through the front gate, Mark. You see this, Ernst. You don't. Um, and then are you going to follow the little path around the house to the backyard yeah, to the yeah. greenhouse? And the first thing, uh, I she's not or I'm not going to just barge straight in. I think, um, having noticed the plants actually turn to face us as a crowd, um. I'd like to, uh, if I get to the uh, greenhouse unhindered, instead of like throwing the door open and announcing my presence, I'd like to see if I can crack the door and see if the plants react at all. Which sounds like a crazy thing when I say it out loud. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to give Mark uh, a choice. I mean, what do you want to do, Mark? Are you going to interfere? You notice Ruby snooping around. Yeah. Um, I think that I'm going to see Ruby and I'm going to know she's not really going to do anything malicious and bad, but I'm going to get, Oh, you trust me? <laughs> I'm going to get my clothes on and I'm going to go over and see if I can keep her from getting into too much trouble. Okay. Um, let's say that Ruby, you walk towards the back. And by the time you get to the door of the greenhouse, Mark, you've made your decision to also come out. Uh, so that's about the time you open your front door. But she's already gotten to the greenhouse. So, Ruby, do a spot hidden when you open the door. Okay. Man, I'm hoping that... that You're just cracking it open. Fail me now. I have a regular success. Okay. So when you open the door, uh, you are 
course, hit with a uh, hot, uh, humid uh, temperature. Uh, you can hear there are fans going off inside the, the greenhouse. Oh. Um, there were probably fans going off yesterday, too. Um, it's uh, the sun hasn't gotten high enough. Uh, there are there's, of course, forests all around you. So uh, the greenhouse is still a bit in the shade. So it's a little darker than normal. And when you look in, um, it looks pretty much the same way uh, that it did to you uh, yesterday. Uh, maybe it's a little moister. Maybe some of the plants are dripping. Uh, you notice that there seems to be like a little sprinkler system that might occasionally go off and douse everything in water just to keep everything moist. Um, that plant in the back uh the flowers are not all pointing in the same direction they're kind of in all directions um okay so what do you do um you're still kind of outside the green right i think uh the part of me that wants to to look at that statue but if I have to run like a gauntlet of I don't know poison poison dart lilies or something. <laughs> no, there's there's like in the in the the pathways there's nothing. Okay, um, there's stuff overhanging above. But sure, uh, I guess um, I think guess yeah. Then I'll enter the greenhouse. Uh, I'd like to keep an eye. Is the is there like a vine of that purple plant that is also like up on top? Not not all the way through. Only towards the very back. End. Okay. Um, so then, yeah, I think I'm going to move to where I last saw the statue. Okay. You closing the door behind you? Yes. I am a considerate breaking and entering person. <laughs> All right. So you move down towards the uh, towards the back end of the the greenhouse. Do you have any kind of plant knowledge at all no i have no idea what i'm doing in here <laughs> right. so you don't know anything that you're looking at uh, um no i i have uh, i am a lawyer and then right. maybe a middling accountant all right so you 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 work your way towards the back yeah you don't have to work your way you just walk right um the 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 pathways in the greenhouse are wide enough to where you could actually have a wheelbarrow if you needed it to bring stuff in and out smart um so you get to the back and there is that beautiful scintillating blue flower and the large um uh semi-large golden statue. Uh at this point, Mark, uh you've entered Corbett's yard and you are walking up to the greenhouse. You're you're pretty sure that Ruby went into the greenhouse. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to see that the latch is unlatched, you know. Yeah, I'm going to casually walk up to the greenhouse and and I'll enter and close the door behind me as well. OK. Um, so, Ruby, just as you're you're looking at the statue and the plant, uh, you suddenly feel kind of a change in the air as uh, Mark opens the door and startles you. Oh, I will turn and be like, oh, Mark! Ruby! Hi! Hi. What you doing? Um, I wanted to have another look at that statue. Um, I didn't think anyone saw me come in this way. Let's, well, you know, it's, it's... Oh, hi, Mark! Much... <laughs> oh, hey, sorry. Hey, what's up? Yeah, I am. Um, yeah, I, I, I couldn't help but notice. I mean, it's a little bit out of the routine for for the sun for a Sunday morning. I can't. I, I don't know. And so she's gonna move towards him at the front, okay. moving okay. away from the statue. Okay. So, like, I look. I know. I know. I have to sound crazy. But no, Mark, no, I, it's fine. It's I fine. Swear, it's fine. I swear, I saw like a child's arm fall out of that bundle, and I haven't been able to shake it. Yeah, no, I'm I'm just here. 
to help keep you out of trouble. That's that's what I'm here to do. That's what I'm here to do. The voice of reason. I'm that little angel, you know, on on the one side, telling you to oh. do, do good things. Well, I, I appreciate it. Do you, do you know anything about these plants? Um, and by the way, uh, I'd like to have her kind of keeping an eye out for the pl like the plants paying attention, like she noticed the last time. <laughs> um, Doctor Mark, you're in pharmacy pharmaceuticals. Uh, why don't you do a pharmaceutical role? Oh, no, no. It's early. Yeah, and you don't always know what a plant looks like before it, <laughs> you know, it's turned into a white powder that you uh, make into pills. Yeah, I took more chemistry than botany when I was in school. So what are you guys going to do? You're in here. It's hot. It's steamy. I'm I'm running support for Ruby. Sure. Uh, I'm okay. I'm here for you. I'm going to move back towards that statue. I kind of want to see if there's like any markings on its feet or anything like that. Okay. It's quite a you, fearsome little creature. You get the impression that it was probably cast. Um, uh, and it's, it's very beautifully polished. Uh, you don't notice anything uh, weird or unusual. There's no text or anything written on okay. it. Um, it's quite shiny. Uh, looks like either he regularly polishes it or, you know, real gold never tarnishes. So, right. But it could be very well plated. Um, I guess in that case, then I will put the statue back. Um, it's, it's heavy, but when you lift it up, if you're picking it up, right. Well, I um, wanted to see the bottoms of its feet. Ah, so. I see. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant its feet, the little, little carved feet, but. You meant the base. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, sorry. Um, yes, the base. Yeah, you can definitely see that it's it's hollow on the oh, inside. Oh, okay. Um, it looks like they make the mold, they pour the metal in, they, you know, swirl it around, and then they pour out the extra metal, and you end up with a shell. Got it. Uh, but there's nothing, nothing inside of it. It's just an empty, empty shell. Okay. Mark, uh, do a spot hidden for me. Okay. That's better. Um, that is a hard success. Okay. Uh, as you are watching Ruby doing this and something catches your eye kind of out of the corner of your eye and you notice that some of the tendrils of this vine that are wrapped around various parts of the greenhouse structure to hold it all up. You swear that they wiggle just a little bit and grab a hold of things and sort of pull the plant line a little forward. And when you look up, you notice that at least three of the flowers now seem to have turned very slowly. Uh, pointing right at Ruby, the ones that are almost directly over her head. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Ruby. Mm -hmm. Yes, what? Sorry. Um, no, 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 sorry, no problem. Um, yes, uh, if you wouldn't mind, would you, would you come here for a moment? Uh, sure, what, what's the matter? And she'll, not in any kind of a rush, but start heading over to Mark. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the uh, the flowers that that um, you thought you saw move. Uh huh. I saw them move. Oh, good. And I I saw them move. I didn't think I saw them move. They were all pointed at us the last no. time we were in here. Um, I, the reason I brought you here to me is because they were looking at you. And if I look over, like if I look behind and up, can I see that? Mm -hmm. Um, there's go, probably ah. five of them now looking in your direction. Yeah. I think um, I think it's time to go. I think I, it's time to go. I am in agreement. Let's get out of here. <laughs> um, so we will m make a scurry for the uh, for the greenhouse yeah. door. Okay. Yeah, you don't really have to move that quickly, but I don't. Yeah, I don't like plants that aim. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Uh, you get to the door. Uh, you're going back out. Yes. Yeah. Um, as we uh, do, we make it out of the greenhouse unmolested. Yes. Okay. Um, as we're headed back across the yard, she's about halfway down the path. You put the latch back. Yes. Yeah. I I want to put the latch back and make sure that everything is just as we we found it. Okay. Um, about halfway down the path, uh, I'll stop and look at Mark. And Mark, there's kind of a, a glint of mischievousness in her eyes that says, "Do you think he locked the front door?" Um. Well, I mean, probably. Yeah. I mean, he's he's yeah. He usually does lock his door when he goes out. Hmm. All right. Maybe uh, maybe we'll get up to some adolescent mischief on another day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's I really think... interesting. That statue's hollow. Uh, there wasn't anything oh, in it. But, that's nifty. Uh, the practical I'm... way to make statues. Well, I mean, it's. Uh, I guess we're back at square one. I there's just something. I can't explain it. There's something odd about Mr. Corbett. And it's, I mean, the arm thing, yes, is very strange. But I feel like I'm being toyed with. There is uh, something odd going on. I just don't know what it is. And I'm one, beginning to wonder if it's a question of, is Mr. Corbett actually doing something strange? Or am I losing it? I, I'll have to have someone come by and check the house for gas leaks. <clears throat> well, if you're losing it, so am I, because I saw the plants move as well. Okay. Well, I mean, yes, but as he said, they I mean, they're carnivorous plants, right? Like, can they do that? I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not that kind of... I'm, I'm trained in that kind of stuff. I don't know that much about plants to know if they would be able to attack. Huh. Well, I think maybe a trip to the local library is in order. Yeah, I, I, I think we're going to do that. Ernst did uh, did learn the uh, the proper Latin name for this plant. So we've got something to go on. To do some research well it's definitely a place to start i'm sure uh the local librarian will have a latin to english dictionary somewhere yeah um why don't we why don't we go round up um round up the boys as it were and see if they're interested <laughs> in uh spending the afternoon in the library yeah, i don't know if the library's open on sunday is it oh i'm so sorry i forgot what day it was uh, uh university library might be for the students might be. We can always call regular library. Summer session. <laughs> Summer session. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll call ahead to the university um, and see if I can use some faculty spouse privilege to get into the library. <laughs> you probably don't need it, but yeah. Okay. Um, um, then then uh, that is where I am headed. Um, Mark is more than welcome to join me. Okay. And, I mean, I'm not going to go around knocking on doors, but uh, I'll give anyone a shout if they're visible. Um, okay. up that, we're going to go and look. We're going to go and research some plants. The thrilling action packs <laughs> Sunday afternoon. <laughs> uh, George, what are you up to today? Um. So I, I think the morning would, would probably just be spent doing his normal stuff, but. The the whole animal mutilization mutil mutilations uh, keep sticking in his mind, uh, especially because he was a vet. Um, I, I think he would try to call over to to Ruby, uh, but if she's not there, um, you get he her would, husband. Yeah. A, a, so yeah, he would uh, leave a message uh, to have uh, Ruby give him a call. Well, Jeremy uh, could always answer. So Jeremy, Jeremy answers the phone. Uh, good morning. Hey, Jeremy. This is uh, George from uh, down the road. Um, is, hey, is Ruby around? I, I have a question for her. No, she went out this morning somewhere. I, oh, uh, okay. You know, she's got something she's working on, I think. Okay. 
Um, well, when she gets back, have her uh, stop over or give me a call. Um, I'd like to ask her, I guess, a favor uh, around, you know, some of these uh, things that have been happening, <clears throat> just some independent research that, that I'm doing. Um, yeah, she said something about the jackal, the animal mutilation. Yes, thing. I... I curious on, on the the events around that and was hoping that she could get some more information uh about you know what the police may have found uh i was going to do some some looking into it on my own just because you know i have the time on my hands not that i think i'll find anything that the police won't but um you know any you know any additional information that that she can get that hasn't been released to the public that might be helpful um ruby does jeremy work at the hospital he works at the teaching hospital on the miskatonic university campus oh okay well from what i understood they're just mutilated animals but they don't yes. think that they were done by an animal they think that, that some maniac is yes no and and what stood out to me was the the article in the, the paper last week, if you didn't see, the, it, it named a suspect that the police had. I'm wondering if she could get some more information on that individual or what the police know. Um, even if he isn't the one, which I you know kind of doubt he is, he may be worth having a conversation with to you know find out what he does know. I mean, the That's... police just don't randomly select people. No, I mean, if they questioned him, they must have had some reason to, right, to suspect him. Yeah, I just want to see if I can find out what what that reason is. Did you say he worked at the hospital, or? I believe so. I believe the uh, the article said he was. Uh, I can't remember if he was an. He, he definitely wasn't a doctor, but he was an uh, orderly or a janitor mm. or, or or something like that. Um, that that's not the same hospital you work at, is it? No, no, no. I, I work at the, the teaching hospital, but, uh, you know, sometimes we, you know, at where we are, we usually hire students, uh, mm -hmm. but the regular hospital, you know, they, they sometimes hire whoever they can get, uh, uh, orderly jobs. It's, it's not the most pleasant job in the world. I imagine they get paid fairly decently, although I don't know myself, but they uh they do a lot of the cleanup so i don't know could be anybody if you got a name you talk to security you might be able to you know interview them or something that that is interesting i i never thought about that all right yeah maybe i'll i'll do that maybe i'll give jack a call or you know uh bernie or ernst or, or... Anybody else see if they're interested in, you know, maybe going down? Um, I don't know if he'd be working today, but yeah, I, I appreciate it. But yeah, still, still let Ruby know that I called. Okay. Okay. Have a good one. All right, you too. Uh, and then after that, uh, I think George would probably start with Jack, uh, just because uh, he's probably much larger than George is. <laughs> uh, give give uh, Jack a call and say you know um I, i've been thinking about this uh whole jackal and uh the tomazuski fellow um do you think i mean and maybe this is just having too much time on my hands and i'm hoping that ruby can get some more information of, about this but do you think it's worth going down to the hospital and and talking to the fellow Oh, uh, I don't know if we filled you in. Bernie and I tried that. Um, oh, yeah, he he got some threatening callback when we tried to leave him the number. Um, no, yeah, it's uh, I don't know. I I didn't think much of it after that. Uh, the my my buddy who I talked to about it said uh, it was kind of like a profiling situation, you know, foreigner. Uh, they mentioned tattoos that uh, you know but that. That's but just something had... that's kind of come back. Yeah, that they said that he looked like one of the bad ones or something. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll bring that up with them again. But yeah, it, it, just come to think of it, he said something about them having tattoos and that being a, a red flag. Hmm, interesting. I wonder what the the tattoos were of. Yeah, don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. The the guy, I I'm guessing he 
probably have brown skin, uh, gets off work at seven, and probably has tattoos that you can see. Well, okay. except actually, uh, when Bernie and I were there, he, everyone was wearing like overcoats and stuff. You couldn't really get a good look at most of them. Did did they say what he did? What uh, I can't quite remember what his position was. Yeah, an orderly. An orderly, okay. Hmm. Well, maybe it's worth going down tomorrow. Um, are are you working tomorrow, or would you be interested in going down with me again? Since you've uh, already been there. Yeah, we we could go. Uh, I mean, seven p.m. is I'm free. That's when he supposedly gets off. But, uh, yeah, just be careful because uh, the this guy seems paranoid. Maybe maybe the cops roughed him up or something. But mm. just. Yeah, Bernie left his number and said, call me, and he took that pretty aggressively. Oh, well, you know, maybe we can position, or maybe I can position the the conversation around, you know, just trying to help, you know, as the, uh, you know, friendly retired vet looking to, you know, figure out what's going on with these animals and him being the best lead. Um, do you think anybody else would want to go down? Uh, you said Bernie. Oh, for sure, Bernie. Oh, e- even after but... his... Uh, you you know him. He he just reading those comic books. His mind's all over the place. <laughs> I mean, it might be in your best interest not to invite him, but yes. But uh, he he does have a, a knack, I think, for for working with some people that that I may not. Um, okay, uh, and, and so I, I think you know George will make plans for the next day uh, for Monday. Um, he's just going to assume that. Uh, Tamazuski isn't um, working on a Sunday uh, and, you know, for probably going down early afternoon uh, on a, on the next day for whoever's interested. Yep. Sure. Sounds good. Uh, good talking to you, George. All right. You too. So a few hours go by and uh, I would like Mark George and Ernst to do spot hit the bulls for me. No, I, I badly failed. Okay. I got yeah. a uh I got a hard success. Okay. I got a regular success. Okay. So right on time, right when you would expect. Uh, Mr. Corbett's car drives back down the street and it parks in his parking spot. You both happen to be looking out your windows or whatever when this occurs. Uh, He parks in the parking spot. Uh, He gets out of his car, uh, the driver's side. He walks around the back side of his car And just as he gets to the back of the car, he stops and like dead in his tracks, he stops and he stands there for a minute, almost, almost a full minute, just staring at Mark's house. Mark, it feels like he's looking right through your window and right into your eyes so, Ernst, you're seeing him stop there and look at Mark's house. He then sort of dusts himself off a little, continues around the car, walks up onto his porch, and goes into his house. And that's where we're going to leave it <laughs> for this week. Our players included Julian Arba, Tyler Hudak, Mark Meltzer, Steve Anderson, Kaylin McDowell, and Gordon Lewis, with myself as the Keeper of Arcane Lore. We have a Discord server where you can chat with other members, you can set up private games, and you can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Spotify, Podbean, or iTunes. Support for the show is provided by our patrons who are listed in the closing credits. If you would like to show us your appreciation, please visit our Patreon page, or you can use the thanks button just below the screen. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows and leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answer any questions you might have. 
This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck, good gaming. Cool. Um, I think you referred to me as Mark Meltzer. What? What? <laughs> I can't be the only one who heard that. Yeah. <laughs> Did I... It's okay. I could be Mark for one episode. Well, let me just <laughs> change his name to Mark. <laughs> let me just read that one line again. I can always splice it together. Our players included Julian Arba, Tyler Hudak, Max Meltzer, Steve Anderson, Kaylin McDowell, and Gordon Lewis with myself as the Keeper of Arcane Lore.